You're listening to the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. This is what I call a random thought podcast. And in this episode, I'm going to share multiple random thoughts that I think that for many of you will give you some great epiphanies and ahas about your life. Keep listening. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I've done some other episodes that I've called random episodes, and those were more, rather should I say, planned out or thought out. And a couple of days ago, I was sitting down thinking about what I wanted to do on this podcast. And as I was looking at my desk, I have notes all over the place. Literally, I have notes that I have from 20 years ago. And I'm going to just show you. I'm just going to crumple here. I mean, this is like three pages of notes that I had from inside my infrared sauna. Now, I don't even know if you've heard of of an infrared sauna, but they're really, really good for you. And I get in the mind, you know, at least three times a week. They help the body detox of heavy metals and chemicals and things in your body. And I pull the notes out of the infrared sauna and I put them on my desk downstairs in my office. And today, as I was thinking about, you know, or a couple of days ago, as, as I was thinking about this episode, I'm like, what do I want to talk about? And what came to mind was an episode I started thinking about a few days ago on living your dharma. And then another episode that popped into my mind in dream time yesterday was about the illusion of healing and manifestation and creating in life and that we think that the bigger something is to create, we think the harder that it is. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I said you had to make $10 this week. You're probably thinking, that's no big deal. $10, seriously? No big deal. But if I said you had to make a million dollars this week, you'd probably be like, whoa, how? But let me ask you this. When it comes to the universe that you live in, which is one of hundreds of billions of universes in this galaxy, and we're one galaxy of many galaxies in this universe, and there are multiple universes now that scientists are, are starting to talk about. Do you think millions of dollars is anything to the galaxy and the universe that you're in? No. It's you who takes something that you perceive to be large compared to something small, and you make it big, and then it creates resistance, meaning you find it hard to do because it's air quote, it's big. So anyway, that's a couple of ideas I had for the episode this week. And then I thought, nope, I'm not going to do that because I pulled these, these note pages that I had out of the infrared sauna and they're all crumpled because the infrared sauna is really hot. And I said, why don't I just share some of the notes that I, that I made? Because these are notes with, you know, thoughts that I would do entire, you know, entire other podcast on and everything. And when I started reading through the notes, I'm like, you know, you can probably help a lot of people with things that just run through your mind and you know what it might be valuable to them let me back up here i don't know that i believe this but nikki uh nikki who runs she's my director of operations and she said to me many times she's my right arm not my right hand but my right arm and she said you know even your babble is valuable and i've never really seen it that way you know i mean seriously my babble is valuable And I started thinking that I take for granted that my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, is a shaman. 
You heard me mention that before. And a lot of you, you know, you might not even know what a shaman is. And even if you know what a shaman is, you probably still don't know what a shaman is. Shamanism means one who can see in the dark. Now, my brother-in-law is a real shaman. Not When I say a real shaman, he's not a CPA Monday through Friday till 5 p.m. I mean, he only works as a shaman, as a healer. He's also a babalao and a nawal and a sorcerer. And he's a very, very powerful individual. And people come to him for one of two reasons, either for spiritual growth or for physical healing. And his waiting list, he's very inexpensive because he's not allowed to charge for what he does. And his waiting list is years long. And I've been at his side now for, I guess, going on 25, 26 years, something like that. I don't know. I got to count the years. Whatever it is from 2021 back to 1996, I believe. I'm hissing there because I'm thinking 1996, I believe. And I've been by his side and I've taken tons and tons and tons of notes over the years. Now, what you might not know, or you might know, I don't, I don't know. I know I've shared it about him, is that his life story was penned. And literally, there's, there's a ghost writer, so to speak. I'll use that term, a ghost writer, who literally heard about him. Well, the person wasn't a ghost writer. They were a student. And this was back in the late 60s. And they'd heard about, not my brother-in-law, but my brother-in-law's mentor, who my brother-in-law was being mentored by. And to make a long story short is this person wanted to meet my brother-in-law's mentor and that mentor said no. So my brother-in-law helped him with the consent of his mentor, help that individual write some books back starting in the late sixties that went on to become cultural icon books. And literally they've been, I don't know, like 20 languages or something like that. Millions and millions of copies around the world and they're culturally iconic. And there was this guy, you might have heard of him. I used to know him casually. He's not on the planet anymore, but his name is Wayne Dyer. And Wayne and I were talking one time back in the late nineties. And he said to me, he goes, Jim, I will go anywhere, anytime, any place to meet your brother-in-law. You just tell me when and where. I asked my brother-in-law and he said, he, he goes, let me check. Meaning he was checking on guidance and he came back and said, no, I, I can't do it. And he didn't. But I know that I, I've, I've, I've been at the side of this extraordinary wisdom for so many years. And I know people on his waiting list wait for years to talk to him. And he's my, in Spanish, cuñado. He's my brother-in-law, my sister's husband. I mean, we hang out as family a lot. And, but he's also my Nawal and my mentor and my spiritual guide and mentor. And he's the one helping me grow spiritually which is what I bring to you guys here in the podcast. So I picked up the notes and I just want to share some notes with you and we'll see how this goes over. I mean, it can be a train wreck. I don't know how this is going to work yet. I mean, you guys might be like, you know, I really like that, you know, FDR fireside, you know, chat kind of talk, or I don't like it. I don't know. What I also know is that you can't please everyone. No matter what you do, you'll never please everyone. So why not just do what you do? And as you've heard me say before, those that are going to judge are going to judge. Just do what you do and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But I have a lot of notes. And one of the, I remember back when I lived in New York City in from 1998, I believe, till 2001, um, Don Javier would call me, my brother-in-law, and we would we'd chat about different things, you know, family stuff and then spiritual things. And I always made notes and I have notebooks of notes. Not only that, being a sorcerer, he's a medium. Meaning, now this might freak some people out. And I've heard people say, oh, that doesn't exist. Well, I don't really care what people think because I know what exists in terms of my models of reality because it's what I live. But he's also a medium. And basically he leaves his body when he does air quote the channeling and beings will come. And they will share everything from ancient wisdom and everything from astro cartography to sacred geometry to physics to mathematics to to ancient wisdom to things like you probably never even heard about before. And I'll use the phrase to demonstrate that language of the birds. 
you know, which is an ancient language. And, and they bestow on me and gift me and those who work with my brother-in-law with tremendous, tremendous, tremendous amounts of ancient wisdom. Lost my train of thought. Anyway, what I was going to share there is, you know, let me just start sharing that with you guys and we'll see where it goes. Oh, notes. The reason I was going to talking about him being the medium is he has also channeled hundreds and hundreds of beings when I've been with him and my family's been at power spots on the planets, you know, my family's been allowed, as I've mentioned before, we've been allowed inside the King's chamber of the great pyramid for two nights. We, which it's not open to the public. We've been allowed inside Mexico, the pyramids in Mexico for two nights unsupervised. And the same thing with Uluru and Palenque in Mexico and other sacred power spots on the planet. Anyway, the whole roundabout point was, is that I have a lot that I can share and just sharing something else is honestly, I want a little change in the podcast. I want it to be easier because when I have to really sit down and think about, okay, I've got to logically make this all flow and the sequence and everything. Candidly, it's a lot of work. It really is. And I don't mind. It's a labor of love, but I'm like, if I can make this easier, let me do it. You might've heard me say before which I've learned from my brother-in-law, it took a long time to sink in because we humans, we love to make life hard and simplicity is best. Ponder that. How difficult do you make your, your, your life? Simplicity is always best. But anyways, I'm going to pick up my notes. You might hear a little crinkling. I don't know what the mic's going to pick up, but I just want to share some notes that I jotted down last week. And these are partially things that come to me, things that come to me of of my own gifts, working with my, I mean, that's the whole point, right? I mean, why would I work with him if I weren't developing my own gifts and my own ability to see and my own ability or abilities as a being on the planet? Because even when I said my brother-in-law's a medium, guess what? You're a medium. We're all mediums for something. Um, You know, for example, you look at Mozart. He started writing concerts when he was what, four years old? Do you think a four-year-old anywhere on the planet can write a concert? Not a an air quote average or normal four-year-old. He was a medium. He was channeling. And the same thing with, with you know Mozart and many of the masters. But we don't even have to go that profoundly. A lot of times when I'm doing live programs, people will say, Hey, Jim, can you uh, repeat what you, you just said? And I'll say, No, I can't. And the reason why is... I don't really recall everything I said. I mean, I know what I said, but I I couldn't repeat it verbatim. Why? Because candidly, when I just open my mouth, it kind of just comes through me. So, and I'm just, and to be very truthful with you, I mean, I'm just being transparent. That's a gift that even today I'm having to learn how to honor and respect that that's my gift. So anyway, I just want to share some notes with you. And I'll, I'll have some commentary on these. But I have, I don't know, one, two, three, four, about, about seven bullet points here from one sheet of paper. And if I, ha- if I stumble here, it's because my chicken scratch in the sauna, you know, dripping, you know, in sweat and everything, trying to hold the pen, trying to wear some glasses so I can see, so I can write. And my, and my writing, you know, is actually a chicken scratch. So I'm just backing up here because again, I'm not cleaning this up. I'm bringing, I'm bringing all of this to you unvarnished. But the first thing I have written here is you relinquish your authority to think you're small. What that means, and I've learned that from Don Javier, is uh, there's a phrase that he uses called seniority. And it's that we come to the planet And we have the seniority of many, many, many lifetimes of knowing. And then we come here and we're little babies and we forget about these lifetimes. And then what we do is all these many, many thousands of years and lifetimes of wisdom we've gathered when we're born and, you know, we incarnate and we're we're born into a body here, we forget it. And then what we do is we relinquish that authority to mom and dad and to aunt and uncle and to, you know, kindergarten teacher 
and to authority figures and to the church and to socialization and society and family gatherings. We relinquish the extraordinary power that we are and that we have to the world around us because we don't know any differently. Now, here's the thing is that when we we relinquish our authority, we relinquish our power. And you, Eric, I don't care where you are right now listening. I don't care how old you are in terms of human age. It doesn't matter to me how much money you have in the bank. It doesn't matter to me how air quote pretty or handsome you are. It doesn't matter whether you're trim and fit or overweight. None of it matters. Here's the thing. You are a powerful, powerful, powerful being. Yet not all of you, but most of you have relinquished that power to those that subjugated you when you were born onto this planet. And then what many of us do, in my observation, is we relinquish ourselves and we subjugate ourselves to people that aren't even as gifted as we are. You know, something I've recognized, and it took me a little while to put my finger on this, with even my following, and I mean that humbly because I don't don't like that word, my following, like people talk about online. Yes, nah, no thanks. But there's something that I'm doing right. And I've noticed in all of my programs that who I attract is progressive thinkers. I attract the spiritualist. I attract what I call, because I'm that, the weirdos. The people that society looks at us and goes, you know, seriously, you're the weird one in the family. And we can air quote, look physically normal and we can, you know, buy nice clothes and dress nice. I mean, hell, I drive a Porsche, but we're just different and we know we're different. And I don't know if you can relate to this. And if you can, I would love to hear. Seriously, I'd love that you email support and let me know if you can relate to this. As a matter of fact, I'm requesting this because it'll help me to know where I need to go with the podcast. I've always known I was different since I was in my late teens or my mid-teens, because I was already looking for esoteric wisdom back then, and I stumbled upon the Rosicrucians. So it's no surprise to me that, you know, I'm born into a lifetime where my brother-in-law happens to be a, a shaman and what many people call a spiritual master. And I remember in college one time telling my friend, a friend of mine, Greg, I said, Greg, and this is where I want to know if you guys can relate. I said, Greg, what did I do wrong? And this, uh, now again, I was a 21, 20, 20, 21 year old kid. I, I didn't have the thought capacity that I do now, and I'm still developing. And I said, What did I do wrong? I feel like I don't fit on this planet. I feel like I was dropped off on the wrong planet. And as I look back 30 years ago, or however long, 35 years ago, I'm like, How did you, Jim, how did you even make that up in your mind? How, how would you even be thinking like that? But I'm curious because I'm finding that seems to be the case with people in my programs. And I guess I'm a slow learner. I'm just honing in on it is that that I attract people that we, we know we're different and I don't mean special in an arrogant way or a lack of humbleness or we're not better. We just kind of always felt like, you know what? I can see what other people can't see. There's more in the world. It's not as simple as, 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 or it, it's simpler. Let me, let me think here, guys, all of you listening. Let me back up and, and, and try my thought again. We just know, let me put it that way. We, we just know we're different. We just know that we're the round peg and in, in, in a world of square holes. And I don't mean that we're like oddballs, literally like everybody laughs at us and points fingers and all, you know, all that. But I remember my brother-in-law one time saying to me, he goes, people think we're Looney Tunes. And that when you think, and there's so many parables like this and different you know, literature and over the years, that when you think differently than the masses, the masses will ridicule you. Why? Because you're different. And even now with all the things, you can look exactly what's going on in the world. And the masses are hopping on a particular bandwagon. 
right now planetarily. And if you don't hop on that bandwagon, guess what? You're the bad one. You're the oddball. When all that you're doing is looking out for what you might believe is your best health and your, you know, your best interest and maintaining the quality of life that you want, there are many people in the world that are castigating that. And so all I'm asking you right now is email support, you know, support at jimforton.com. And all I want to know very simply, I'm just thinking here because I could open up a can of worms for the support team. But all I want to know is, do you relate? Do you, do you resonate when I say that is that you feel like you're different? Because I know that what I attract is what I call those people that are awakening meaning spiritually we're and I don't even mean there's no dogmatic in spirituality. I mean, as cosmic beings, I know that I attract those that are awakening to higher mind, higher consciousness, higher being, higher ways of being. And I just want to know if that relates to you or not. Okay. Another thought that I had, and when I had the stroke last year and that heart failure you know, eight months earlier, Don Javier said to me, all of this happened to you so that you can grow in ways that you never would have grown so that you can help more people. And I'm just being fully transparent. It's been hell physically. Literally, it's been very hard. Or let me put it this way. It's been very challenging. I wouldn't say hard. It's been very challenging and that I'm still dealing with a lot of things physically that I have not worked through yet that I'm still healing through. And it's sometimes some days are physically, physically very challenging. But the next thought came out of that. And that next thought is, because I know it's going to apply to me. Well, it does apply to me. So I know it applies to you, which means for me, it shows me I have work to do. But the next thought is, is you know who you are by and from your limitations. Think about that. You know who you are by your limitations. Because if I ask you right now, who are you? You can't tell me, most of you can't tell me who you are other than making some generic phrase up. I mean, you can say all day long, I'm cosmic potential. What does that mean? Yet you're broke. Well, if you're cosmic potential, that means that you know how to manifest. But you truly, it's nothing more than jargon. If you can't manifest, are you the cosmic potential? Yes, but you haven't learned how to master the cosmic potential. So when I look at this, I look in that most of us know ourselves by what we don't have and what we're not, as opposed to what we are. And we know ourselves, because if I ask you to define yourself just generically, You're going to define many things that are very generic. And then you're probably going to go into, well, I'm not this. I'm not that. I can't do this. I can't do that. And that's one of the ways you define your limitations. So think about that. And what I have written here verbatim is, you know who you are. Well, I I have here, you know who you are in your limitations, but you know who you are also by your limitations. And then what we do is you're not really that. That is your interpretation and your perception. But you know what? That's not you. That's you making interpretations and perceptions about the limitations that the being that you has. But it's not you as a cosmic being. Okay, next. And I know I've said this before, but it popped into my mind again. Because I'm going to tell you, and I just mentioned it, and I don't, in real life, I cuss a lot, just to be honest with you. And my, and my favorite word is the four-letter word. But I don't do it here because I have a lot of kids li- kids listening. And heck, this day and age, they probably cuss more than adults because they're learning it. But here's the thing. I've said it before. Everything before you, you've agreed to. And I'm looking at my own life. And I'm looking at, I mean, for crying out loud, And even notice how I'm making on big deals, but they're not big deals, but they are big deals. I had a stroke and a heart attack, uh, not not a heart attack, a heart failure in one year. That's a lot compared, if if I'm comparing to most people, I mean, if I'm comparing to no one, then it's just, you know, a stroke and heart failure. But if I'm comparing to the population, 
That is a lot for one person to have in one year. And then I look at, okay, I agreed to this. Now, did I agree to it last week? No. Did I agree, you know, did I agree to it, you know, five years ago? No. But at some point in the totality of my existence, and most likely before I came to the planet, I agreed to this experience. And that's why I, I have it in front of me. Why? The bigger reason is for my learning. Because you've heard me say before that we're only here for two reasons. So we can grow and so we can evolve. So what I'm encouraging you to look at, because even though I've had a stroke and heart failure, there are a lot of people who have it a lot worse than I do. I mean, they have, I don't know the right wording. I mean, I've had some significant things happen. They've had major things happen. I have never had to do it. And I started looking on, on YouTube, just watching videos about people healing and their mindsets and, and how they healed from very significant things that we consider significant things. And I'm just thinking here, when I, when I look at this, I, I'm, I'm looking at how all of us are contextualizing, how we're making sense of this and how we've learned to make sense of it by giving up our seniority. One thing, my mind's hopping around here a little bit. But I look at all the things that I agreed to that I never would have consciously agreed to, but they came to me for my growth and my learning because I'm learning lessons that I never would have had the opportunity, opportunity to learn had these things not happened. So what I'm, I'm you know, requesting you look at is all the things in your life that you think are air quote bad. That's where you want to go. The things that are bad, you know, you're married and somebody steals all your money. Well, you know what? You played a part in that, but, and there's, there's no, we play a, we play a role in our lives, but many times people like to be victims. But what I want you to look at and just try it on for a week and see how it fits, because this is where the growing happens is everything that you have in your life right now you've agreed to at some level. And you can argue all day long and say that's not true. But it's true because it wouldn't be in your life if you hadn't agreed to it. Now, something else I wrote down that follows up here a little bit is what you're, this is huge when you get it, at least in my interpretation, it's huge when you get it, is that what you're in agreement with, you're in alignment with. I'll repeat, what you're in agreement with, you're in alignment with. So if you're in agreement that money's hard to make, you're in alignment with that. If you're in agreement that it's hard to heal, you are in alignment with that. If you are taking one step further, subconsciously in agreement with money is easy to make. Well, then guess what? You're literally a money magnet. You're pulling it into your life. So think about that. I'm seriously requesting you take some time and you chew on that one is what you're in agreement with, you're in alignment with. Thinking about notes here. Don Javier called me. This was back in 2001. And I had some, which I've never shared on the podcast, some very significant non-3D, non-conventional thinking, literally mind-blowing things happened to me one night. And I'll, I'll condense the whole thing to this. He said to me, he called me the next day, and he said to me, he said, I had to do those things last night because if I did some things that you could analyze away, you wouldn't have really listened to the message. And he goes, what I did was so far outside your 3D reality and analytical mind that you can't ignore it. And that's literally what happened. And the purpose of that conversation, he says, uh, I'm going to Peru in a few months. You have to go with me. 
And anyway, I'm, I'm going to skip on here. But in that conversation, I wrote it down. I have a, I have a notebook and I took notes the whole conversation. But he said something to me that I want to share with you. And I've never shared this publicly. And it's a simple line. And it's pretty generic, but it's very powerful. He said to me, when you align with spirit, that will be priceless for you. Now consider that when you align with spirit, that will be priceless for you. Now you listening, we have to look at, well, what does that mean? Align with spirit. And that, that means move into your, I'm, I'm, I'm like stuck on a word here because I want to say the word spirituality, but people take the word spirituality and they make it dogmatic. It's that move into the essence of who you are. When you move into the essence of who you are, that's alignment. And then that's when we get into what I talked about earlier when I started this episode. That's when we start living our dharma. And that's when life starts opening up for us. So that's just, I wanted to share that line. That spiritual alignment for you will be priceless. Now that can be based upon our karma Anything for any of us. I mean, for example, I mean, I can't even play, you know, a kazoo. I mean, I'm not musically inclined, but you know what? I don't need to get in alignment with with music because that's not my thing. That's not my dharma. But when people like Elton John, they align, look at their entire lifetime. And of course, he's had his challenges, but look how easy it is no matter what he and how destructive he is in his own lifetime many years uh, life and how destructive he was many years ago look at what continues to happen to him professionally that is in alignment with dharma and that's in alignment with spirituality so just kick it around chew it see how it works for you but when you're in alignment that is priceless. Okay, I've got three pages of notes, and I'm not even through my first page. But let's see here. I've got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cover one more bullet here, and this is so powerful. And I mentioned it before, but maybe I'm gonna say it in a different way here. Is Don Javier once said to me? He said, and I'm gonna slow down here. Please just let this soak in. He said to me. The world is this way or that way because I say the world is this way or that way. And then he said to me, your world is this way or that way because you say your world is this way or that way. And what I wanted to share with you here is this one line that I wrote down is Who you are is who you say you are. Now, we can look at that and say, well, I can say I'm a millionaire, but I look in my external circumstances and I'm not a millionaire. Therefore, I'm not a millionaire. Every millionaire that has become a millionaire started first by being, and you've heard me talk about that, you know, in the much earlier episodes on identity, by being that identity. So we are who we say we are. And that's why I did an episode on we speak our lives into existence. And so look at your words because your words are powerful. And I'm going to share with you right now, I am no guru. I don't even like that word by any stretch of the imagination. Everything I'm sharing with you right now also applies to me equally in my own life. Because I don't want to talk. I've seen people do it. There, I, I've coached a lot of people and a lot of people that are influencers and I'm going to be just as, oh my gosh, as honest as I can be. I've seen people that are very influential, literally tell their following and their, their tribe, you should not do X, Y, Z. And then what do they do once they're off the stage? They go do X, Y, Z. They don't walk or talk. And I see a lot of that. And what I want to share with you is, have I mastered everything in my podcast? No, I haven't. Am I working on every single thing 
on every single episode in my podcast. Yes. Why? Because life's a journey and I can always improve and I'm not looking for perfection, but I can always strengthen and I can always improve. So all I'm saying there, I don't know what I'm saying. I kind of lost my train of thought, which is that happened because of the, uh, the stroke. I mean, I don't have any notes in front of me other than what I just shared is I'm still regaining my short term memory back. But anyway, so you might be thinking, dude, what's up? You started saying this one thing and then you didn't finish your thought. And if that's the case for all of you guys, I don't mean to leave you hanging. I mean, just stay with me. Just, I promise to bring you what I think is very valuable content for you guys. And what I think, you know, content that's changed my life. So the final comment was this, you are who you say you are. Oh, now I remembered. And that's generally what happens with this stroke thing is that I'll start a, a conversational loop. It's what I call it, a loop. And then I'll forget the loop sometimes. Not always. I'm getting much stronger. And then later I remember the loop. But I had an episode on you speak your life into existence. And that's why now I know where I, now I know where I was going. We have to be careful with our words. And even me, like looking at my healing right now, I have to be cautious with my words and my thoughts. Why? Because my words and my thoughts affect my energetic body. My energetic body then, for lack of better terms, trickles down into my physical body. Because we don't heal first physically. We heal at an energetic level. And whatever is happening in the physical body is a reflection of something going haywire in the energetic body. And, you know, that's tossing myself under the bus in front of you guys But you know what? I'm learning my lessons too as I'm on the planet. So anyway, we'll wrap this episode up. And I'm going to see, because again, they're not, they're hands, they're hand scratched. But let me see if I can just go through these very quickly. You relinquish your authority and think you're small, which means we relinquish it, relinquish it to other people uh, when we're babies. And then we forget how powerful we are is, you know, who you are by your limitations and we know our we know ourselves by our limitations, not by our potential. Next is everything you have before your eyes, you have agreed to. Next is what you are in agreement with, you are in alignment with. That there, by the way, before I finish a lot, well, the last one is is uh, who you are is who you say you are. But that one is the alignment one, what you're in agreement with, you're in alignment with. That one's a kicker for me. And I'm going to sit with that one this week. So any, anyway, you pick one that you're going to, if you, if you don't want all six or whatever, just pick one or however many I gave you and sit with it. All right. Hopefully this wasn't a train wreck. Hopefully you guys got wisdom here and you got value. And just to be transparent and honest with you, I really like this format because I just don't have to prep. I can just sit down and just go. And I know that when I just sit down and go, a lot of things just like bombardment, they just start coming into my mind. And I think I might be able to be of service to you guys by taking that approach to the podcast, but we shall see. Anyway, as I always say, if you would please, and I'm very serious, please, if you find value in the podcast, please share it on social media because we can help more people. You're here for a reason. You're not here because you have time to waste or you have nothing better to do. We can help more people. So if you would, please, please share the episode. And as well, if you find value in the podcast, then please leave a positive review on iTunes. For that, I'm very, very grateful. And thank you for allowing me to serve. Okay, do what you can to make it a great day today. And I'll catch you on the next episode or another episode. Bye-bye. If you're serious about transforming your life from the inside out, I have a free training that you're going to want to listen to. And it's helped tens of thousands of people all around the globe. The thing is, all of my students start here because when you learn to change your thinking, you'll change your life. Because as you already know, Life happens from the inside out. The training is called Discover How to Eliminate Fear and Negativity in an Instant. So, 
go to jimfortin.com slash eliminate fear and start learning how to transform your life at a deeper level from the inside out. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimfortin.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes and a good one, by the way, (laughs) I'd be grateful. And through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.